Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video while I'm here at work, before I start work. Um, I just want to explain um, an experience that we had uh, last week or so. Um, my son had such a bad meltdown that it caused him to have seizures the next day. Um, and then it, the following day, it just made him drowsy, like he was out of it. I actually started getting worried. I'm like... Do I need to call his neurologist? <laughs> like, I was getting worried. Um, so, I don't know. We don't know exactly what happened. Well, yeah, it was his, uh, the phone. Something happened with the phone. And we knew better not to give him any screen time, but we figured he was doing so well. Um, well, it was an hour-long screaming match, and... My husband had to hold him down, a, you know, like a 20-minute hold. So we did that, and I'm just like, what makes it go from bad to worse? Like, I just can't understand. So I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got a high-functioning daughter. I am going to ask her some questions. I'm going to pick her brain. So I did. I asked her, I was like... Lizzie, was it was it mean to for you when you get mad? And she described it as boiling water. Hmm. I'm like, okay. And I was like, is anxiety and panic attacks are they the same? And she goes, no, they're completely different. And anybody who deals with anxiety and panic attacks knows that these are two different things. So it's not something she was educated in. She's dealing with this with experience. Um, I deal with anxiety and um, panic attacks, so I I know I know that they're different, but she knows because she experiences them. And I go, well, how do you know? How do you know the difference? And she goes, a panic attack makes me feel like there's a bear somewhere. I'm scared. I can't move. And I'm like, okay, interesting, you know. And then she goes, anxiety just makes me feel frustrated. I just don't know. I just, Arr. and I'm like, wow. I was like, okay. So I'm thinking, imagine an autistic child that can't explain that, that can't say those words, and probably can't describe it like she can. Freaking out having a panic attack, having an anxiety attack, going from mad to meltdown so bad that it, I mean, it caused him to have seizures the next day. It was, it was pretty bad. So just to get that different perspective really helped, really helped to understand a little bit where she's coming from, where he's coming from. I will say this again and again and again and again. Try to flip the tables. What do you think it would be like? As in, if I couldn't explain something, my aggression's probably higher. You know? Um, how do we act when we miscommunicate? When you're having a regular conversation with somebody and they're just not getting it and they're just not understanding what you're saying. We get frustrated. We get mad. Now, try that with a child, you know, somebody who's can't, doesn't know, and we're just, like, not getting it. And I feel like Scott's like, your mom, you're supposed to know, and you're supposed to be able to read my mind, and, you know, and he can, and I can see that in him a little bit. Um, so, I don't know. It was just kind of... An interesting conversation that I had with my daughter. It was really interesting. So, and then I asked her, I was like, does colors bother you? She's like, no. She's like, I don't like some colors. She doesn't like the color clear. She's like, it's lifeless. I can't stand clear. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, is there shapes that bother you? Is there... And she's just like, no. And then she said... I don't like change, I don't like restaurants, and I don't like sudden noises. And I'm just like, wow, who knew that I just learned a whole bunch of stuff from my 11-year-old, you know? But with her being autistic, 
for some reason, I just never thought to ask these questions. Like, we always try to guess and we assume and da-da-da, but why not just ask them? Why not? Sit down and have that conversation. It was pretty cool. I'd like to hear um, other people, like, what, what kind of conversations are you having with your autistic child? What are you kind of seeing when it comes to you're a little bit lower functioning child, but still can kind of pick their brain a little bit. You might be surprised.